Hello everyone. Welcome to the Media Tech podcast. I'm your host Gaurav Chaudhary. This podcast series is in conversation with some of the finest minds in the world of technology. Every episode we talk to experts from Media Tech and its partners across a range of products and solutions from the mobile industry and the automobile sector to health to entertainment and next generation wearables. What are some of the emerging technologies that are shaping our future? and impacting us going forward be it transformative digitization or innovative solutions in the smartphones or smart devices space meet the people empowering these innovations as we navigate the rapidly evolving technology landscape and strive to meet the demands of new age smart customers and connected ecosystems The MediaTek podcast streams on MediaTek web channels on earshot.in on spotify.com on Apple podcast Google podcasts and a host of other platforms. In this episode, we are delighted to have James C Chen, Vice President Product and Technology Marketing at MediaTek. James is going to talk to us about Wi-Fi 7, multi-link operation and related areas. Welcome to the show, James. Rob, thank you and it's good to be here. Thanks for having me. Right. So, in January 2022, MediaTek showcased the world's first live demos of Wi-Fi 7 technology to customers and industry leaders, demonstrating the technology's super fast speeds and low latency transmission and potential. What are some of the key advantages that Wi-Fi 7 has over Wi-Fi 6? Well that's a very good question Gaurav and I think um usually and this is certainly true in the past when the industry introduces a new Wi-Fi standard and its associated technology the first thing that comes to people's mind is well it's going to be much faster mm-hmm. um and certainly that holds true even for this latest uh, Wi-Fi 7 uh, based mm-hmm. on 802.11be uh, specification but it's much more than that Uh, sure uh, on one hand if you compare apples to apples meaning you know the same number of antennas uh, between Wi-Fi 6e and Wi-Fi mm-hmm. 7 Wi-Fi mm-hmm. 7 is going to be faster by 2.4 times so right. that is an achievement in itself but the Wi-Fi 7 story does not obviously stop there um, mm-hmm. it has a number of notable features uh, one of which is called MLO It yeah. stands for multi-link operation. Yeah. And in a nutshell, you know, before we get into it, in a nutshell so that people have, you know, proper uh, can put this into proper context mm-hmm. is that MLO really allows the Wi-Fi network to address two things. One is uh, lower latency. Yeah. Uh, you know, latency has become somewhat of a buzzword because of 3GPP and its efforts on 5G. So mm-hmm. MLO is kind of like, you know, uh, Wi-Fi's answer to 5G in terms of lower latency but also the other thing that it can uh, MLO can do, do which is not very often mentioned is that it can provide a more stable and more reliable network overall yeah. and we'll talk about that a little bit yeah you know Wi-Fi 7 technology will probably be the backbone of home office and industrial networks in the post pandemic digital economies help us understand how it's going to change our lives Well, I think for a Wi-Fi 7 for the first time, right, you see this, like I said earlier, this interesting pivot uh, and inclusion of features that is not just good for, you know, higher speeds. So, mm-hmm. you know, during the pandemic, uh, well, we were all sheltered at home, mm-hmm. working from home. Our kids are being educated from home. We yeah. got a firsthand taste of what uh, we need in terms of a, a really a robust home network. So that right. means not just speed, but lower latency. Um, and then as we migrate towards a somewhat hybrid or new normal style of working where, you know, you go into the office maybe half the time and the other half of the time you're, you're back at home, you know, mm-hmm. the whole infrastructure of IT needs to kind of learn to adapt to this, right? So Wi-Fi 7 obviously needs to do that in the, uh, not in just the home, but at work itself. So to be able to manage Uh, all of a sudden an influx of people coming in and then uh, you know being able to provide all of them with good access to good video quality and voice quality right. so i think it's uh, kind of a uh, you know i would say you know good uh, somewhat uh, fortuitous that wifi 7 has shown up because yeah. the, the intersection of 
a video, which we really didn't have before, live video, as kind of like a mainstay in how we communicate, I think really is going to shine a bright light on you know, why networks need to be upgraded, you know, particularly on the Wi-Fi side. Multilink operation, or MLO, shows great promise in completely revolutionizing connection speeds, delivering higher Wi-Fi speeds, more stable Wi-Fi, and lower latency, and ensuring no bandwidth is wasted. MLO technology, as you said, will be critical for delivering faster and more reliable video streaming, gaming, and anything else that requires constant, sustained, and real-time throughput. How far are we from getting this into mainstream practice in our lives? Well, um, it's going to take a little time, you know, because uh, for MLO to really, truly shine and mm-hmm. deliver on its promise of not just lower latency, but, you know, more reliable networks, like I said, right, more reliable, stable networks, both ends of the link have to have MLO. So mm-hmm. your gateway or your access point in the office or your you know, home gateway in your home office or your home needs obviously to adopt uh, MLO as part of the Wi-Fi 7 uh, to suite of technologies. And then, of course, the client that you're using, for example, the laptop that I'm using right now to communicate uh, and, and have this podcast or your mm-hmm. phone or however yeah. you uh, device you use uh, as your means to consume the Internet, that has to also support MLO and therefore by default Wi-Fi 7. And so that brings up an interesting question, right? You know, the adoption of Wi-Fi 7 and how long mm-hmm. that is going to take. Mm-hmm. And, you know, as we know, uh, there is, a, you know, two sides of this because uh, the markets um, are very interesting. It's not a one size fits all market. Mm-hmm. And some of the more consumer style markets, you know, the adoption of, uh, you know, 802.11BE will happen mm-hmm. really quickly. Uh, MediaTek is working with some of the biggest brand names in the world. And, you know, there'll be uh, products, uh, consumer type of products uh, that will be launched, for example, sometime first half of next year. Mm-hmm. Um, but then, you know, if you look at more of the enterprise kind of customers, more of those right. kind of verticals, mm-hmm. those people uh, will probably, uh, will, you know, won't uh, start rolling out Wi-Fi 7 and part of their life cycle refresh until maybe the first half of 2024. Right. And so, you, so you'll see these uh, waves of adoption of Wi-Fi 7. and this is no different than it was in Wi-Fi 6E, Wi-Fi 6, Wi-Fi 5. The Wi-Fi right. industry has these waves of adoption. So, but you know, we do need both sides of the link to enjoy MLO. So, you know, look for, you know, maybe beginning, like I said, the first half of next year, but really mm-hmm. for things really get rolling first half of 2024. Right. Uh, you know, today's consumers want to be always connected with a reliable and fast Wi-Fi connection. This is also because of a consistent increase in the usage of applications such as video calls and meetings, entertainment and real-time gaming, among others. How do you see the landscape evolving and growing in a post-pandemic world? Well, I think we're going to be doing more of that, <laughs> more of this, <laughs> uh, all these use cases that you said, more of it, but hopefully in a better quality sort of way. Mm-hmm. Um, and not so because you know Wi-Fi networks have always been known as best effort because the yeah. underlying protocol that it uses is you know kind of was a best effort um, right. uh, because of the inherent uh, you know issues with unlicensed spectrum and a wireless mm-hmm. you know wireless unlicensed spectrum. But Wi-Fi over the years have you know introduced you know uh, amendments to kind of patch it up, if you will, to make it more predictable. And I think mm-hmm. Wi-Fi seven. Uh, you know, takes that next leap with, uh, yet again, you know, some of the technologies that we mentioned, specifically MLO. So I'll give you a very good example, right? So um, right now when you do gaming or when Mm. you do any sort of real-time interaction, whether there's a video call like this Mm. or even just a voice call, um, Mm. in Wi-Fi 6 and 6E, prior Wi-Fi technologies, um, if a band gets congested, because right now for a certain part of the world, we have three bands to choose from, right? 2.4 gigahertz, five, and of Mm. course, a newly uh, approved six gigahertz. Um, The decision to use which band really falls on that of the client. Mm. Uh, The client really tells the home gateway or the enterprise access point that says, look, I'm Mm. experiencing some difficulty connecting on this particular band. Would you please, you know, Mr. AP or Mr. Gateway or Mrs. Gateway, please switch me over to another band. 
Right. And so it's really a, a client initiated kind of thing. Now, the issue with that is you have a vast array of clients from a vast array of different suppliers. Mm. And if you let the client make this decision, what happens is that you won't have a very uniform user experience. For example, right. your phone may decide to not switch bands and just kind of tough mm. it out. Mm. Uh, whereas maybe your laptop or another device may want to switch right when it sees interference, right? So right, right. This, these kind of things are not predictable. And when they're all on the same network, you can have kind of varying behaviors. Now, right. what Wi-Fi 7 MLO does is it takes this decision-making capability that was once the client back into the access point or the gateway. Yeah. So the central brains, if you will, the, 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 the center of the network is the one that's making the decision and asking the client to move or moving the client from one band to the other um, in a centralized fashion. Right. So right. it's like a conductor in a symphony, right? The mm -hmm. MLO serves as a conductor and it decides which band, uh, if you will, that each client should be on as to kind of maximize the benefit for everybody. And I think that's what we want. We want all of the clients, much like instruments in an orchestra, to all play together nicely. And so that in the end, you get a nice harmonic, symphonic result, right? That uh, people will, you know, will obviously, you know, will like, wow, this is great, you know. And, mm. and so that's why, I mean, you know, this is the, the often not talked about benefit of MLO uh, that uh, it has built in. Right, absolutely. And the demand for low latency seamless connectivity is growing. And as you just said, it's only expected to spiral with the adoption probably of 5G networks. We are going to, India is going to uh, get mainstream 5G and by probably around 12 months from now, uh, a large part of this country will be using 5G networks. How do you think will the Wi-Fi connectivity roadmap shape up across home, business environments, public spaces, and enterprise segments going forward? Well, I, you know, I'm not sure if it's really going to, change uh you know dramatically overnight i think what's going to happen is people are just going to expect it mm -hmm. right we you don't fire up a, you don't you know you know join a network or go to office or come back home and say i'm i, I expect my network to be you know very bad i expect yeah. it to be slow i expect to have long latency now when you sit down uh, in your chair and you swivel it around to look at your screen whether it be mm -hmm. in your home or in your office you expect the network to be there for you Right. You expect it. We all expect it. Right. So that level of expectation is only going to get high. Right. Um, my kids are not going to understand what is it like to be in the world where you don't expect it. Of mm -hmm. course, the network's going to be low latency. Of course, I'm going to be able to do video chats with my teacher. Of mm -hmm. course, I'm going to be doing all these things in simultaneity. Right. Mm -hmm. So I think it's just that the expectation will be more ingrown uh, because whether we like, human beings, right, we're uh, creatures of habit. And when we're used to doing something, uh, you know, by habit, it becomes part of our life. So we, we expect it to be there no matter what continuously. Now, I think Wi-Fi 7 will just kind of help, um, you know, make sure that the network is stable so that when you send in front of the computer, it will always be there. You don't have to think twice, nor your kids, nor your family or your friends have to think twice that low latency and high speed is going to be there. The robustness and reliability that I mentioned earlier through MLO is going to be there. And the fact that 5G has been telling everybody uh, that latency uh, is very important, I think people just come to expect it now, right? Yeah. Any network that comes online, whether it's a local area network like Wi-Fi or a mm. personal area network like, you know, the later generations of Bluetooth or a mm. wide area network like 5G or mm. even wired networks like fiber, people would just expect it. Because we've evolved and we come to expect it as if by default. In some sense, we're our own victims of our own success, right? You get used to it because it's so pervasive. So you just expect it to be there. So I think Wi-Fi 7 will just make sure that it's there with plenty of margin, right? To, to make Absolutely. sure the speed and load may see is there. Absolutely. And finally, Wi-Fi technology must evolve continuously to meet the new requirements of a globally connected post-pandemic society. Apart from emerging real-time applications uh, such as, you know, 4K, 8K streaming, AR, VR, and metaverse, what are some of the other newer areas that you feel will fuel this growth? Well, I think, uh, you know, 
the predominant use of Wi-Fi is in the home or in an office setting, or let's say in the yeah. public space, right? Yeah. Uh, it's not for outdoor. Uh, that's mm-hmm. really not what it was designed to do. It's that's more three G P P and five G and all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. So, and that in those terms, I think Wi Fi will continue to evolve to support many of these, you know, simultaneous and spontaneous uh, kind of applications that we're used to. Uh, but it'll do it even in a more robust way. It'll do it more, yeah. uh, you know, in a I would say more of a you know carrier grade way. So, for example, one of the ideas that um, people are working on for the next generation of Wi-Fi networks beyond Wi-Fi seven mm-hmm. is the so-called the concept of, you know, um, you know, right now we have one gateway or one uh, a- access point transmitting to one client. So the client mm-hmm. effectively gets this transmission from what's uh, from one source, and there's nothing mm-hmm. wrong with that. Um, mm-hmm. But think about you know uh, conditions where you know the wireless environment is very challenging. Right, mm. either because it's very large, like inside a, a stadium or inside a factory floor, or you know you have uh, you know you're living in a, in a in a in a place where you know you maybe have two three stories of, mm. of house, and so as you move through these very challenging environments, uh, sometimes one access point or because it's fixed, right, may not be able to do the best job because the client is moving. So there's this idea where instead of just having one access point transmitting to one client, maybe there are more than one access point transmitting to one client at the same time. So this is the concept of what we call multi-AP, where okay. more than one access point in your home mm-hmm. transmits to one client as it kind of moves you know, in the home or on the factory floor. And you might think, well, you know, how can that be? Because in yeah. my home, I only have one access point. It's mm-hmm. in my gateway in my office. Well, mm-hmm. that's very true. But as we also know, uh, the market also is adopting very quickly what we call mesh nodes, right? Mm-hmm. These repeater, these little things that we scatter around the house to kind of repeat the signal. Mm-hmm. So in the future, imagine this, imagine these repeaters in your main access point working together to simultaneously transmit to one client and to make sure that the client you know, gets a signal from at least uh, uh, one access point or one mesh node as it you know moves throughout this environment, and that's what we call multi AP, and that's to ensure even more robust connections, uh, you know, in different locations of a home or office or factory floor. So that's going to be one of the um, I think major uh, improvements uh, beyond mm-hmm. Wi-Fi seven, as are you know a host of other things. Um, but I think that one you can call out as something that's going to be truly different, raises the robustness and reliability of the network even further. Thank you, James, for these deep insights into the future of Wi-Fi technology, the Wi-Fi 7 technology that MediaTek is developing, and the technology's super fast speeds and low latency transmission potential, and also taking us through the future of MLO and how it's going to change lives. Thank you so much for dropping by and taking the time out to have this conversation. Thank you for having me. Thanks so much.